question is seven. Uh, we have that, let's see, we're trying to create prediction and confidence intervals. We have the information y hat equals 3 plus 4x. We have x bar equals 6. We have this information, xi minus x bar squared. That equals 18. We have y at 4 equals 18. Um, this, is the, this is what we got when we collected the data. We got at x equals 4, we got 18. This is not what this is. Because 4, 16, uh, at x equals 19, so that's, this is what we actually got. This is what our equation predicted. Let's see. And, um, We want to create a confidence interval and a prediction interval for um, x star equals 4, right? OK, now the first question asks, um, which interval would be wider? OK, let me remind you of the equations for you have a prediction interval or confidence interval. Uh, y hat plus or minus. Um, let's see. Uh, is, uh, hmm. How many people are in our study? Uh, let's see. Don't, 15 people. So we do t at 15 minus 1 times the square root of 1 over n ta plus x minus x star, or x star minus x bar, doesn't matter, squared over x i minus x bar squared. OK. And our prediction interval is very similar to this. Uh, 1 plus 1 over n plus x star minus x bar squared. OK, so now we have these equations. And we want to know which one's wider. OK, now recognize something. Um, the prediction interval equation has this Fat, big fat one in there, right there. OK, that's the only difference between these two equations, right? Now, what does that mean? So if x star equals x bar, this term drops out because this becomes 0. And we have 1 over n, OK? And the only difference between this and this is that one factor, OK? I'm sorry, there's one thing messed up. Times square root of MSE. OK, and MSE is the same for both these two. So the only th difference is this. Um, now, this 1 will, will make the interval wider because it's square root of MSE. If this is 0, this term is 0, it's square root of MSE over n times the square over this. So it's the square root of MSE over n for this one. But this is 1 plus the square root of MSE over n. Yeah. Uh, so it, it like overall. It just increases. <laughs> so as you, yeah, you multiply this in. So you actually get a whole square root of MSE extra when you multiply this into it. OK, so it's, it's a whole lot wider uh, overall. Let's see. Yeah, so this is it's a whole lot wider overall. Um, yeah, so, and it'll always be wider. If, if this is the same x star point, it's always going to be wider. OK, now at, let's see, next part of the question, we have, let's see. OK, now we want to construct the intervals themselves at x equals 4. So we want to do 
circumference interval first. Do y hat. So uh, we plug in y hat into our equation, or I'm sorry, x star into our equation y hat. So we get 16 plus 3 is 19. 19 plus or minus t at 14, whatever that is. You guys can find that. Times the square root of MSE times 1 over 15 plus, and then we have x star minus x bar, so uh, 4 minus 6 squared over, and we have this, this thing is 18. Okay, and our prediction interval is similar to this. It's 19 plus or minus t at n minus 1 times the square root of MSE times 1 plus 1 over 15 plus, and so this is, this is all the same now, but we just need that one factor, 4 minus 6 squared over 18 in parentheses. Okay, and we get that these two values are, um, so for the confidence interval we get 18.7789 to 19.7789. And our prediction interval, this is just this straight math. We're also given that MSC is 0.45. Sorry. Uh, and the reason these are such tight intervals is because MSC is so small. So we have a pretty good regression equation overall. Let's see, 6, 4. Okay, now uh, as you observe, this interval is a small, this is only about a distance of 1, and this is only about, this is a distance of about 3-ish, a little bit more than 3. So of course, as expected, this one's bigger. Uh, this is, of, that, of just that one factor, so remember that. Um, now, this is another pretty nifty problem part. So that was part B. Now we're on to part C. OK, now we're, if we're also interested in the prediction interval and confidence interval for x star equals 8, would we get the same length of intervals? OK, now think. This is a confusing problem, but all you have to do is look at the definition of prediction and confidence interval. OK, now you look. Y hat, it'll be the same for both of them. I make mean, it'll be it'll be different for x star equals eight, but that doesn't matter. It's, we're talking about the length. This defines the length of the interval, not y hat. So t of n minus one is the same. So we still have fifteen people. One over n is the same. Uh, one's the same. Now the only term that's different, x x i minus x x bar is the same. That doesn't change. Now the only term that's different is this right here. OK? Now, before we had x star equals 4. So we had 4 minus 6 is 2 squared. So that's 4 total. But listen, now we're doing 8 minus x bar. 8 minus 6, that's still 4. Still 4. So two, 8 minus 6 is 2. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, but we square it. So we still get a, a 4 in the top of this fraction. Um, so whether or not you thought that, the interval will be the same length at x star equals 8, OK? It was basically, the length is the same for all of these, for no matter what point you do, uh, that is equidistant from the mean on both sides, OK? So if we, if we had done our interval x star equals uh, 1, 1 is 5 different from 6, so we did done 25. But if we have done it x star equals what, uh, 11, it would have been the same as with x star equals 1, because it's still 5 away from 6. OK, and now we're interested in whether or not the length of the interval for, as compared to x star equals 4, to x star equals 12. OK, now remember, the only thing that defines distance, or the length of the interval, is the distance from x bar. Because we basically. Our data points are kind of not 
they're not centered around x bar, but we know a lot about x bar because it's an integral calculation in a lot of the things we have. It's uh, the closer and closer we get to the mean of x, the closer and closer we, the closer and closer our intervals will be. Okay, it's the more we know because we don't we know less and less. Our, our, our x values are center at, centered around x, and the, more, the farther away we go from x bar, the less, we, the less points of information we have, okay? So like if we, yeah, because we have, most of our points are centered around x bar, most of our, our uh, input values, our x values, are centered around x, and as we get farther and farther away, we have less of them. Uh, yeah, so that's why that, so this, this term right here totally defines basically the width of the interval after all these things are defined. So as the farther and farther you get away from x bar, the bigger this fraction, the closer this fraction t becomes to 1. Okay, because it, 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 at x star equals x bar, it's a 0, it crosses out, but as you get farther and farther away from x bar, it gets bigger and bigger, and it gets closer and closer to 1. We don't want that. We want it to be zero, because then our prediction interval will be very close together, and we'll have a really good interval. Okay. So the, as compared to x star equals four, that interval would be bigger, because and you can do this for yourself. You'll see, because this term will turn out to be thirty-six over eighteen instead of uh, four over eighteen. Yeah. So it'll be quite bigger. It'll actually end up being two. Right? Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's, okay, and that's the, that's the end of the packet. Um, and they'll both end up, they'll both end up being wider because this term is the same. Um, okay, so some final thoughts. Uh, just remember to, to know the definitions of all this stuff. Uh, remember to to yeah to know how to read a mini tab output. Remember all that stuff. Uh, just keep your head cool. Deep breathing always helps. I'm not kidding. Uh, studies have shown. Um, know what it means to construct a Bonferronian two key interval. Uh, know what it means to test for interaction. Uh, know how to Fill out a whole ANOVA table just from a few of the components because how they're interrelated, how the, the degrees of freedom add up, the sum of squares add up. Uh, MS, like MS whatever, is just SS of that thing divided by the degrees of freedom. So just remember that stuff. And you can fill out any ANOVA table. Uh, and they'll always give you enough information. And remember to spot check yourself. So if your degrees of freedom don't add up, you did something wrong. If some square don't add up, did something wrong. So just kind of keep that all together. You'll be fine. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.